So this is why meditation is so important because just like in an eclipse where the light is blocked out and what can be seen by that light is blocked out. And in the case of being a personality, it's like an eclipse because the light is blocked out by the personality and the personality considers itself to be the source. Most human beings are playing God, aren't they? If you think you're the source of what's happening, isn't that playing God? Yeah. So most human beings are playing God. Most human beings consider themselves to be the source. I am, I am the source of what I do. I am the source of what I think. I am the source of what I feel. I am the source of what I have, right? That's why I'm so preoccupied with me. Uh, I'm interested in me because I'm the source. I will succeed. I will achieve. I will cause things to happen. I will make money. I will produce children. I will create relationships in the world. So this is the me reality. And when you put the word me in front of anything, it changes what it's in front of, right? If you put the word me or my in front of anything, it changes the meaning of that thing. For example, money, right? I'm happy for you to have as much money as you can get, but I don't want you to have any of my money. Right? As soon as you put my in front of money, it changes the understanding of the word. Same thing with my body, my life, my car, my money, my parents, my children, right? This is a preoccupation with this illusion, a preoccupation with this appearance that I am the source. And through the practice of meditation, you can come out of that bad dream. You can wake up. You can start seeing the truth. You can start being aware of the fact that you, the personality that you take yourself to be is not the source. The, take, the personality that you take yourself to be and the body that you take yourself to be, the body is an object that is, exists in time. It's a time body, right? It's an object that exists in time and space. The personality is a program that's running in your brain and in your mind, right? But when you identify yourself as that, it's not a program anymore. It's this self-concept that's alive. It's not a program anymore. You consider your, your personality to be real. It's alive, right? And that's part of the problem because if you consider yourself to be the personality in the body, both the personality and the body are a time reality. Therefore, they're constantly changing. Impermanence is the rule. Impermanence is the law of all material reality. It's constantly changing. So the body's constantly changing, the personality's constantly changing, the emotions are constantly changing, everything that's happening in the world is constantly changing, there's no place to rest, there is no place for any security. So when we begin to practice meditation, it becomes possible to discover that which never changes, that which is totally stable and consistent at all times, and that which is never not here, it is always here. I was talking to this meditation student today who's a beginner in meditation and studying the teachings. And one of the things I emphasized to her is I said, I want you to be clear that you can wake up at any time. This isn't something that you have to wait until you learn enough first. This isn't something that you have to wait until you practice long enough first. No. The reason it can happen at any time is because it's already happened. It's already true. This is not something that we're trying to achieve. We're not trying to achieve self-realization. You know, we're, we're not trying to accomplish it. We're not trying to get it to happen. No, we're not trying to do any of that. In meditation, we're just sitting still and being quiet so that, so that the reality that's already the case can dawn on us, so that the reality that is already the case can be noticed and realized and once it's noticed and realized, you now have the keys to the kingdom. Once it's noticed and realized, you now have the ability to experience well-being. Because this awareness, this consciousness that is our true nature, is always in a state of well-being. It's never not in a state of well-being. It's not trying to be happy, it is happiness. 
It's not trying to be peaceful, it is peace. Right? It's not trying to be satisfied, it is satisfied. Right? But the personality living in time and identifying itself with thinking, right, is in the pursuit of happiness, in the pursuit of satisfaction, in pursuit of peace. And this is something that takes a lot of energy. We wake up every day and chase, we wake up every day and work on our lives. We work up every day and do what we think will work to make us happy. We're just like gerbils. <laughs> You know, we're just like gerbils. We do get up every morning, we, we use our energy to do what we think will make us happy. So we use our energy to make money because with the idea, if we have money, we can get what we want and if we get what we want, we'll be happy. That's the, that's the understanding that the, this game is being played by. That, that's kind of the way the game works, right? Get what you want and you'll be happy. Yeah, but if you, if you want to see what the evidence has to say about it, all you have to do is look at the news. There are billionaires that are shitting their pants right now because they're afraid of going to jail. <laughs> so the money didn't work, did it? No. And if you look at a lot of people that are supposed to have a lot of money or fame, the things that we think cause happiness, pay close attention, look at the news. You know, they're going from one divorce to another. You know, they're going from, you know, one struggling situation to another. And when the shit hits the fan, which it will, the shit will hit the fan for all of us, right? No matter how much money you have or how famous you are, uh, you're in the same boat as everybody else when that happens. And if you don't do the practice that's necessary and if you don't study the teachings of the truth, when that goes down, you will suffer. It'll be tragic. Your death will be a tragedy. Your old age will be a tragedy. You'll suffer the breakdown of the physical body. You'll suffer the breakdown of the mind. As the brain ages, and the body ages, and the nervous system ages, and we're in the decline, energetically in the decline, right? The awareness that you are doesn't decline. The awareness that you are doesn't suffer, doesn't get old. Won't it be wonderful? I mean, just use your imagination. Wouldn't it be, won't it be wonderful mm -hmm. as you get older and the body gets weaker and the energy starts to decline and the memory starts to go? Wouldn't it be wonderful if when you get older that's not what you are and you can experience being alive and satisfied and peaceful and happy and when the body dies, you can just let go. You can just let go. You can just exhale one last time and be at rest and be at peace. So one of the things that I did as a psychologist was at a certain point I gave up on the whole thing. I worked in the prison system with maximum security inmates you know, for 32 years. And one of the things that most conventional psychologists say about working with that population is don't expect any results. These are antisocial personalities. These are psychopaths. These are sociopaths. They don't change. You can't change them. Hmm? Well, I was working with people who are considered antisocial and sociopathic. And when I started to work with, with them using the training of the truth and the training of sitting quiet and being still and practicing realizing your true nature, the effect on them was the same as the effect on everybody else. I had one guy that I worked with when he was in prison. He was a gang, motorcycle gang president. He was in for murder, right? His name was Chemo. They called him Chemo because he was a chemistry major in college before he dropped out and became a biker. And then he killed another biker over money, right? And he looked the role, you know. He had the tattoos and the long hair, you know, and he, all the inmates were afraid of him, you know. If you pissed him off, he would just smile at you, and that would scare the hell out of the other inmates because they know, they knew that he could kill them without a problem. But he was a bright guy, right? So I worked with him, and he got to a place in this work where he woke up. He woke up in the middle of being a biker in a maximum security prison, right? So what did he do? He started living consistent with his true nature, right? 
he started a vocational training program in the prison for the inmates, right? And that was so successful, and his behavior was so successful that he got transferred to another prison, a medium security prison, where he could start a vocational program there. And he was so successful there in terms of his behavior, right, that he was paroled. So several years after that, I was an associate administrator. I became an associate administrator at, a, at one of the prisons. And one day, this guy walks into my office with a suit on. And I barely recognized him, but it was chemo. He comes over behind my desk and hugs me. And he says, I just wanted to stop by and thank you for saving my life. After he got paroled, the Department of Corrections hired him to be a gang intervention specialist. <laughs> he had a state car, he had a good salary, he had good benefits, and he worked in that job until he retired. And now he has a good retirement. Look at the difference. You know what I mean? This is a guy that was in prison for murder. All the inmates were afraid of him. You know, he's very confused, right? Very angry, very impulsive, right? And overnight, he becomes this character that all he wants to do is make a contribution. That's the possibility. That's the possibility. And one of the reasons that I think that prison was such a powerful training for me, because at some point I realized most of humanity's in prison. It's just portable. Most humanity is in prison. It's a portable prison. They walk around in it all day long. It's called their mind. Right? It's a prison. You can't think thoughts outside of your conditioned personality. So it's your past living into the future. You can't have thoughts outside of your conditioned personality. And because of the fact that most people don't evolve and mature, most people are children. Most people are walking around with an emotional makeup of a child. We may not believe in Santa Claus anymore, but we believe in something worse than Santa Claus, and that's the personality that doesn't exist, just like Santa Claus doesn't exist. But people believe that, and they believe that they are that, and they live their life as that, and even though the suffering continues and there's no hope on the horizon, they continue to get up every day and try and make it work. So my recommendation is to surrender. <laughs> my recommendation is to see things as they are and realize there will be no success in your life as a personality. That's going to fail. And if you pay close attention, you can see that it has failed already. How many projects have you had for relationships or finances or in relationship to your own body or your own psychology? So this is something that if you practice it consistently the way it's meant to be done, day after day, you begin to experience the light of your own awareness. You begin to see things as they actually are. And because that's the case, you no longer are willing to play out the personality. You're no longer willing to listen to your thoughts as if they're the truth and then blindly follow them and act consistent with them. Because now you see that when you've done that, it didn't work. When you were being self-righteous, it didn't work. When you were trying to avoid being dominated and be the dominator, it didn't work. It doesn't work. It can't work. But if you wake up and you start to experience your true nature, things start working. They start working because you stop resisting life you let life be the way life is. You let other people be the way they are. You, you stop insisting that life conform to the way you want it to be, and you stop insisting that other people conform to the way you want them to be. And whatever you let be will let you be. So you start to experience having some space in your life. You start to experience the possibility of real love, not romantic love, not the love that has to do with what you can get from it, getting your needs met love, being interested in being high on love like people are when they fall in love. No, you start to experience real love and you start to understand that real love is an expression of your true nature. Real love is about giving, not getting. If you practice that, you'll feel it, the difference. You feel the difference. 
You know, if you, if you just practice looking to see in your life as you go through your day, you know, where can I make a difference? You know, where can I make a difference? Where can I be kind where kindness would make a difference? Where can I express, you know, my affinity with other human beings where it'll make a difference? The opportunities are there all the time. But we're preoccupied most of the time with worrying about what we're going to do tonight, what we're going to have for dinner tonight, and you know, when we're going to have sex again, and how much money we're making. We're, we're consumed with that. So we're not available. We're not available. If you walk around and you look at people in public places, you can see a lot of unavailable human beings. It's like they're in a trance. You know what I mean? It's like they're in a trance. And if you're in front of them, you're not in front of them, you're in their way. Right? This is the state of mind that most human beings are in. That's why when you drive a car, it's almost impossible not to get caught up in the psychological madness. You know, somebody's in front of you when you're on the highway, they're in your way, or they're going too slow. But if you pay close attention, right, and you follow the thought process and you do what your personality wants you to do, so you step on the gas, right, so you can get in front of everybody, you can win this race, and then you get to the next red light and everybody that was behind you is next to you again. <laughs> That's how it goes in life. 